provocateur Antonin Scalia. Republicans continue to defend the decision to fast track Barrett's nomination. And Democrats are calling into question some of her past rulings as a judge, what it could mean for landmark cases before the court. Nancy Cordes of CBS News, of course, covering the hearings for us, and she joins us live now. Good evening, Nancy. And we want us to, you to tell us what you saw as the most memorable moments from today's opening statements. Paula, what I thought was interesting was just how clearly both sides really signposted what they were trying to achieve with this hearing. For Republicans, you know, it was all about praising Amy Coney Barrett's resume, her temperament, her conservative judicial philosophy, and warning Democrats not to bring up her Catholic faith or her membership in this small religious group. They argued that that was bigotry. Democrats made it clear they had no interest in talking about her. Her faith and they really focused instead on Obamacare and the fact that they believe that if she were to join the Supreme Court that that would make it that much more likely that the court would strike down the Affordable Care Act and so they all had these big placards behind them pictures of their own constituents who they felt would be harmed if Obamacare were to be overturned they clearly believe that this is a winning message because health care is such a big issue for American voters and is essentially a concession at the end of the day, uh, they better turn this into a messaging exercise because there's very little they can do to stop this nomination. Yeah, mm -hmm. Messaging ahead of the election, no doubt. Nancy, what do you think we should expect for tomorrow's hearings? Well, David, this is going to be part hearing, part endurance test because all 22 members of the Senate Judiciary Committee are going to get a half hour to grill Amy Coney Barrett. So that is one long hearing tomorrow, and then it happens all over again the next day with follow up questions. And she's going to be asked about all kinds of thorny issues about health care, about abortion, about President Trump and her relationship with him, and what she'll do if, let's say, an election case makes its way before the court just a few weeks after she's been seated. Um, there's also going to be a lot of back and forth about the timing of all this, as you referenced, because as a of right now, if Republicans are successful, they are going to be able to confirm her just a week before Election Day. Fascinating week ahead. Nancy Cordes, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate you taking the time, and you'll hear more from Nancy coming.